welcome to Crash Course. I'm your host, John Green, and today we will be talking about Samarkand in present-day Uzbekistan. It was built in 1370 by Timur. Actually, it was revolutionized by Timur. Prior to Timur, multiple conquerors swept through, such as Alzheimer and the Great in 329 BC and the Mandals in the 13th century. Yet after the Mandal split, the Khanate of Tamerlan in the 1370s made Samarkand its capital and lined the streets with shops. Okay, Heimler, Samarkand is located in the Zarifshan River Valley and can be traced back to 1500 BC. The land is very dry and dirt pathways are most ideal for caravan and horseback travel. Little do you know, the mean monthly hours of sunshine in Samarkand for January is 132.9 and for June, 376.8. Wikipedia. Thank you so much for that invaluable piece of information, Heimler. Fine, it is located 144 kilometers from Juma, Uzbekistan, and it's known for its brilliant moss. Well, if you knew a thing or two about geography, you know that Samarkand is 772 kilometers from Kashgar. Let's go to the thought bubble. It was first taken over in 329 BC by Alexander the Great and rebounded from the destruction in a new Hellenistic league. Later on, the Umayyad Caliphate captured the city in 710 CE. As a result, it became a center for Islamic scholars and knowledge. Samarkand so roots go deep, and the trade city was around from as early as 206 BC in trading metals, spices, and cloth with Sogdian traders. Samarkand's so social pyramid placed sacred Muslim lineages above the merchant class. Influx of merchants within the city led to communities of merchants as they were honored for their importance in bringing in wealth. Thanks, Thought Bubble. Samarkand wasn't conquered until the early 13th century by, wait for it, the Mongols. Well, I have actual real life footage <clears throat> from Ibn Batuta. How was your experience when visiting Samarkand, Ivan? Well, man, it was one of the greatest and finest of cities, and most perfect of them in beauty. And I have traveled all across Africa and Asia, so I have that kind of experience. Wow. Are there comfortable travel accommodations within the city? Yes. Similar to Kashgar, caravan says were established in Samarkand and allowed merchants and their animals to rest until the next stop along the Silk Road. Interesting. What is bought and sold in the markets? Well, spices, silk, carpets, porcelain, and weapons were traded in Samarkand. Alright, let's go to the open letter. But first, let's see what this is. Thank you, Stan. Ah, oh, it's papel! I mean paper. It's paper. Muslims began using you, and in turn, the Europeans used this knowledge to start the Renaissance. The glorious Renaissance! So thank you, paper. Find it at a market near you. Well, that was interesting. I bet another interview from Tamer, the famous grandson of the great Danish Khan. Would you consider Samarkand a dice work community? Why, yes, Muslims were a prominent influence in Samarkand as they established mosques, promoted science and technology, and increased trade. Originally surrounded by Saudi in origins, it set an initial tone for trade in Samarkand. Sounds marvelous. What are the perils within the city and on the roads in and out of Samarkand? Is there a garrison station there? Thanks to the Mandals, <laughs> trade within the city and along the Silk Road blossomed in Samarkand. Mandal soldiers guarded the city and the roads, promoting safe trade and influx in commerce. So that's why the Mandals follow your safety needs until we conquer you. Cut! Cut the camera! <laughs> Now one final question, Trevor. I know how busy you are traveling around the world, conquering lands, and gaining knowledge, but what are some of the prominent developments that you cause? Some prominent religions are Christianity and Zoroastrianism. There are Buddhist temples, and I also established mosques indicating Indian and Muslim origins. This shows how Samarkand is a place of cultural diffusion and multitude of religions. Also, Samarkand is known for its myths autonomy, with irrigated outer culture built around the floodplains. Samarkand was greatly renowned for its craft production and facilitated cultural diffusion among diverse peoples. Before we wrap this exciting endeavor up, I want to add how Uluq Beg, Tamur's grandson, benefited Samarkand by having astronomers and mathematicians from all over the Islamic world. If you really knew your facts, Johnny Boy, you know that he had an entire scientific school. It not only increased knowledge of the outside world, but was looked upon with awe by astronomers and mathematicians. 
Today, Samarkand is a key tourist attraction for people all over the world. Mr. Green, Mr. Green, how would you know? You've never been outside the studio before. You know what, past me? How dare you insinuate that I don't have a social life? That concludes our Crash Course video. It was made with the help of Stan and my old history teacher, Mr. Kwan. Heimler out. Do some bloopers? 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 Ivan, how do you feel about that beard? Have you been drawing it out? I have been drawing it out. It is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That doesn't help. It does help. <laughs> it does not. Look at my. Excuse me. Let's go to the thought. <laughs> about geography. <laughs> Also, Samaritan is known for their midst autonomy with agriculture. You're doing agriculture. You, had, you, you, you could, you. Ready? Three, two, two, one. Two, three, two, one. Go. Okay. 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 Oh no. Do not recommend. <laughs>